Gloomhaven Games with Neuromasters. I'm Joseph and I'm here today with Draco. Today it's time to continue Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion in the Solar Playthrough series. And we're going to jump straight into the second scenario, which is again, it is tutorial scenario. So uh, yeah, this, this is sort of like a basic version of the game, but it's very, very well made. I really like how they did this so that new players can get into the game like step by step playing these five first uh, scenarios and just learn the game as they go. I think that's such a good idea. And I also think it's going to be more and more fun for me as as I go because I will get closer and closer to sort of the actual full game and also the new scenarios and everything happening with the story and so on. So in this one um, I already placed everything out on the map, which was not that smart because I was planning to read this to you, so I'll try to do it anyway. Uh, so, the goal here, a hole in the wall, the goal is to kill all enemies. Like, we, we met these raiders, vermi raiders that attacked us on the road last time. And then we found a hole in the wall and we're gonna, like, track them down and try to find their nest, right? So in this one here, it says that the tracks are easy to spot. Vermlings have never been known for their, sub for their subtlety. Uh, you follow the scratching and indicators of a body being dragged until you find yourself approaching the walls of Gloomhaven. The sun is very low, but something isn't right. That isn't just a shadow cast across the lower section of the wall, it's a hole. The Wormlings have made a nest for themselves by burrowing into the wall itself. How industrious. You crouch low and try to sneak closer, but they, move, they must have guards watching the entrance. There is a shrill shrieking and then a number of Wormlings jump from the dark brandishing their dull, poorly made weapons. No choice now but to defend yourself. Luckily you managed to get your second wind, but you will definitely need a nice long bath after this ordeal. So we are basically outside here of this hole in the wall. And I love how this, like, again, this is something you can't really do. Like in the, in the first Gloomhaven game, the map pieces were all like generic. So they were sort of fitting the wherever we were in the world, right? The terrain type. Here you can actually see, I mean, details of, you know, torches on the walls and it's so nice. I really love this campaign book, how it just brings a scenario to life. And it has like indicators. So you still have the traps, but it tells you where to place them and so on. But you still have the actual token there. Uh, so I like that. This is a door. Uh, so this is basically closed here. So, and we're not gonna reveal the enemies in here until we open the door, which kind of makes sense. In, in a learning curve way. Uh, I mean, you st we still see what's in here, so yeah. And that that's maybe, I don't know, I think that's coming later. That's something I would like to have more in, in the game, that like if there's a closed door, I would I don't wanna know what's in there. I wanna reveal as we go. Uh, I hope it's coming later in, I think I heard something about that. And I hope that the stream is doing fine with the sound and uh, picture and everything. Let me know in the live chat if there's any issue at all. I hope that the live chat is working today. Um, I think so. So, let's get started. We have Hatchet and Void Warden that I'm handling here. Draco is just gonna cheer me on from the sideline. And where do we start? Well, we have. I can go through a few things. The special rules here just says that we now have two of these B cards in our deck. So basically they introduce new things like the area attack and like losing a card to play the effect here. Nothing fancy. Uh, we also have some coins out now and we will get coins when you kill enemies as well. There's a treasure over here that, you know, when we pick it up, we're gonna read uh, a segment here and see what that treasure is. That's that's exciting. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, we'll save the conclusion for later and let's get started. I don't think we'll be using any magic yet. We will, however, use the little deck here for the, so this is basic Vermin Raiders, so there's four cards. There's a full deck of Vermin Raiders uh, in the game as well, but we use these basic ones here. I think it's just, you know, so we learn sort of how this works with like flipping one of these cards every round to see what they will be doing. We have their modifiers, we have their uh, thing out there. And I think that's it, so let's get going. I think, I mean, we are going to, so at the end of this, I, you know, if I just peeked at the rewards, we are going to open the item shop so we can buy stuff. So I think I want to pick up this coin. Um, so maybe I can shoot him first and then pick up the coin, go there, so that I don't get disadvantaged by shooting him when I stand next to him, right? So 
We have an attack three, range three. Oh yeah, we have push now as well, which is of course nice because you know there's traps out here, which I think I will use right away then. So let's have that one. And now we don't know which initiative they will move on, which is you know much more exciting. We don't know how fast they will move. I think. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two. I could do a double attack. I think that makes sense. So I'm gonna play it like this. You'll see soon what I selected there. And then for Void Warden, she has a card now that forces an enemy. Let's see, where was that? She has a card that forces an enemy to move. Um, here it is, I think. What, where did I see that? I thought I saw that somewhere. Loot strengthen. An ally may perform an attack. Close up. Oh, here it is. So, it's kind of confusing with this loot thing here. So, uh, first of all, it disarms range 3 and then force the target to perform a move 2 with you controlling the action. So I could send one of them into a trap that way. Hmm. I'm thinking, how much damage is the trap right now? I know that they, that scales up. Oh, okay. Sound may be a bit low. i raise it a little bit. Uh, I think the sound... Uh, the the damage of the traps, they scale, if I remember correctly, with the level of the mission, right? So, I would assume it's two here. Uh, three damage. Okay, it's three damage. Why is it three? All right, so it, it is three damage for some reason. I don't really understand that. I thought it was two for the first level and then it scaled up. We are playing on level zero, right? So... I don't know. Okay, so it's three damage traps. Does it say here? Yeah, it does say there. Uh, three damage. Okay. So they only have four life. So that should work out nicely to just take them out that way. So I don't think we need to disarm him then, really. I could disarm the other guy, I guess. Hmm. I think I just rather attack that one. So let's attack here. Then we could move and move and model maybe. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so we're doing that. So we reveal everything. So this is a 23. And here we have 24. And they will go at 36. Okay, so they will be uh, last to go. Use these tokens here. See if I can pan down a little bit like that, maybe. And then it's going to be Void Warden starting. Oh yeah, this is actually in the correct order already. Okay, there we go. So Void Warden will start at 23. She will move three and model. So I'm thinking, let's see if she goes, she could go one, two, three, stand on the coin, she will pick up the coin at the end of the round, which is nice. And she will model someone, three, within range three, I think. Let's see, this guy, so they are going to, and now we can check the card to see what they will be doing. They're going to move plus zero, which means they will move at one. And then they will attack minus one, so they will attack at one for range two. So he can't attack her anyway, he can't reach her. That guy though can attack her. So let's model him, so let's model number one. So that was the action. Now. Then she has the attack three, range three. So let's shoot number one as well, I think. We might even kill it, we'll see. So let's draw from her modifier deck over here. And uh, let's see what we get. So it's going to be, I did shuffle this earlier and it got, we got a plus one, which is a bit silly because then 
the guy's dead already. So we didn't even need to muddle him. But okay. You never know. We could have been a minus one, right? So, so he's gone. Which means we also get a coin over there. Where he was. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, we should play on level one, actually. How is that determined? I can't recall that. I think it's like... I think it's like we are both at level one. So I think that we... We add, add those together, we get two, and then we half that, which is one. So why is there even a zero then? Um, I mean, the rule book should say that, right? When it talked about uh, putting a monster in the... Oh, yeah, yeah, set it to one, okay. <laughs> so then we played wrong last time. Not that it really matters. This, I don't think there's a way to lose that first scenario. But okay, that means that he's actually alive then. That's interesting. Okay, so he's still here. But he has four damage. He has five health now because of this. That's the only difference really. And the elite has uh, two more. So, okay. So, let, let, I mean, we don't need to make it easier on ourselves. It's already easy. So, he has four damage. And he is modeled. Let's not forget. I should have read the instructions more carefully, I guess. <laughs> so... All right, so that was the Void Warden's turn. Well, it wasn't a bad turn. You got some stuff down here. Um, all right, so. I guess we will do the, the three damage craft. Yeah, 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 I think we can kill both this way. So let's start with the double throw. We're playing uh, an A card, and then we have a B here as well. Uh, this is a tutorial card, so this has attack 2, range 3, target 2. So we can hit both of these guys with an attack of 2. Uh, that's two separate attacks. Uh, so we start with the first one. And I'm going to draw over here, and that is going to be plus 0. I didn't say who I attacked, but I'm just thinking the closest guy. So he takes 2 damage. And I am using dice. They, they don't count with the game, but I think it's just easier... Uh, then having all these little tokens over here for the damage. Then let's hit the other one. So it's uh, attack 2 and it is going to be plus 0. Okay. And I have that upside down for some reason. So that means that we... Um, okay, that means that we made 2 and he had 1 life. Yeah, so he's dead anyway. But this time it's, you know... Uh, proper proper kill all right so that was the attack now we're going to move and push oh yeah yeah there's a table about level somewhere in the books that's true there must be uh thank you mika okay so we're going to move three well i'm just going to move one i'm just going to move up here by the way she should have picked up the coin uh, when she had ended her turn and now we're going to push to target one adjacent enemy. We're going to push this guy too. And when you push, you need to move them further away from where they already are in, in relationship, you know, in, to you. So, so in relation to you. So let's go one, two. He's going to hit the trap. The trap is gone. He takes three damage. And he already had two there. So he, it's a five in total. So he's dead. And we get a coin there as well. All right. So that was nice. Now, Hatchet will pick up this coin here. I think they're worth like two gold each. Again, I will check that later on. But it's uh, this. This probably some kind of. Yeah, there are instructions for that. All right. So we've done our thing. Now it's time for the last little verbing scout over there. Uh, it's not looking good for him. He will move for one. So it's move plus here. He will move for one. Now there's a trap next to him. He won't go into the trap unless he have to. If that's the only way he can move to get to us, his focus will be the closest, um, you know, hero or mercenary. So he's going to go over there. And now he wants to attack with a range of two. He can't reach, so he's not attacking. So that's about it. Now let's go to the next round. So let's look at what we will do here. I think I think I want to pick up the coins and kill this guy. And then next turn, I'll probably open the door. I don't know. So 
we just move, let's see, we do have some ranged. We have another ranged attack there. So then we could move with, we'll move four. We have the loot one, so we could pick up both coins, set, but then we would lose the card, that's the thing. I don't think it matters actually in this game. I don't think we need to worry about that. So let's do that. For the Void Walker. So he's going to he's going to kill the well he's not gonna kill it, he's gonna hurt the we need to do some damage here. And she doesn't really have that much damage. I think later on in the campaign I am going to shape her more into more damn attacking and less supporting since I'm only playing two characters. Um, but at the same time, it's good to have some support and some healing and so on as well. So, But right now she has a lot of heals. We don't need that as many heal abilities. We could have her. She's going to go after him though. That's the thing. All her cards are pretty slow initiative wise. I don't think, well, she could do a standard attack, I guess. Not that exciting, but. I'd rather have her do a ranged attack, but I can't. I mean, she can make like an ally do a ranged attack. So that actually makes sense. She can make him shoot again. And. Yeah, let's just have her go late and be able to make a hatchet act again. So, so that's a 68. And this would be a 25. And the wormlings are going at 50. Okay, they're just going to move attacks. This is exactly how it acted last scenario. I love these little text boxes for you know new players and so on. And for me as well, I mean, reminding me on things that I might have forgotten in the game. So these two will switch places. Hatchet will go first. And so he will move for four and loot one. So he's going to move one, two. Let's see, he needs to be within three. So he will go there. And now he will loot for one, which means he picks up everything within the range of one from where he is. So he gets two coins. And then the card is lost. So it's going over on this side because now it is gone and right now there's no way to get those back. There's certain characters might have the ability to do that. Certain items may help you do that, but most of the time you, if you've lost, it's lost. Then he's going to attack for three, range three, so he will attack the Wormling and it's going to be a minus two. Oh, that's bad. So he's only doing one damage. So a little bit of a setback here is number two. There we go. Then it is time for the, uh, oh, actually it's like this. Now it's time for the Vermin. So he's going to move one. He's need to find focus. It's closest, uh, let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. It's equal distance. So he's going to go for the one that acted first, which was Hatchet. So he's, well, he's basically gonna go here anyway. And then his attack is not ranged, so he can't do anything. So Void Walker time. Void Warden, I keep saying Void Walker. I don't, I don't know why. Um, then she will do a here one ally within range two no it's this one it's this one one ally within range how did i plan this he's not next to the enemy so he can't do this huh i don't know how i planned that that was weird okay let's do let's do this one then, looting is not going to happen, but she can strengthen. She's going to strengthen Hatchet because he's winning range three. And then with this one here, she is going to do the top part, which is disarm. So she's going to disarm uh, the enemy here, but in range three. Okay, so he is disarmed and this is interesting. And then she can force the target to perform a move to with you controlling the action. So she will force him to go into the trap, which means he takes three more damage. So he's up to four, but he's still alive, but he is disarmed though. And the disarm will be there until the end of his next turn. So, all right. 
back to the last two cards. I mean, we could do a short rest and just, you know, get our cards back, but I think we're just gonna play these. And let's just do it as quickly as possible. We'll work something out with those cards. Let's start with an 1843, and they have 85, so they're going to last this time. Okay, and they're going to push and attack. Well, it's never going to happen because we're going to kill them. But um, then this has the shuffle symbol, so this means that this deck will be shuffled at the end of the round. And again, what I usually do then is I just put it sideways or I do something with it so I remember uh, that I need to do something with that soon. Okay, so let's just uh, get this guy out of here. I'm going to could attack one range three mm. is I oh no 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 this is in, this is really cool here I can just do this move to all adjacent enemies suffer one damage so you can just move here and he's adjacent so he dies because they already had four damage on him we didn't even need to draw any cards. Then we have a heal three on self, which, you know, he's not hurt, so we don't need to do that. All right. Then we don't have any enemies, which means he will never do this, obviously. So this will be sort of reshuffled uh, for the next time any enemy shows up. And what is Void Warden doing then? I mean, she could go and open the door. In most cases in Gloomhaven, I would say that that's a bad idea to do that with the last acting character because then when you open the door, whatever is in here will get to act. In this case, though, actually we shouldn't have reshuffled this. I just realized it should be this card should still be out here because if we go open the door, they will get to act and they will do this thing, which is pushing and attacking, and you know they're not going to be able to do that because we can see where they are. So I think we will have her go and open anyway. And I think she will do this one here. Move four. So she will go one, two. Boom, door is open. She has two more steps though. But before anything else happens, we will put in these guys here. So one is over there, one is over there. There's no one here because we're playing two players. So there's no enemy there. And then she has two more steps. So I think she will go they're not going to reach her anyway, right? So she could go... Oh, unless she goes there. That would be stupid. So she will just go there. Then she could do the top part of this one. Oh, she could actually attack him in that case. Yeah, let's do it. I'm not going to sit around. So let's have her go here, just because it's more fun. She will do an attack. Now, this effect here says an ally within range 3 and so on. But you don't need to do this. You can always do the little... Always an attack of 2... Um, in close combat or a move to these are like generic things you can do so she's going to do a close-up attack of two we're going to draw a modifier and it is plus one so she's doing three damage in close combat to this guy that's cool no hey taffer it's really nice to play solo it doesn't take up much i mean it takes up way less table space than gloomhaven because of this map thing here and all that it's so easy to set up as well also, now I have everything like this because I want as much as possible to be on the camera. Uh, if I would play off camera, I would probably spread things out a little bit more and you know, maybe have a cup of cof coffee here and so on. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, that affects how I organize things, but very easy to play. Okay, so she did her attack. Now it's time for these guys. They get to act and they will act sort of um, right away. If I recall correctly, I think they act right away after you have finished your turn, whoever opened the door. So I don't think they care about the order. Now I'm starting to talk about rule things here that I'm not 100% uh, sure of. Uh, let's see, open doors. Um, monsters are set up. Uh, the character immediately resumes their turn. I knew I, I saw something about that. Um, like when they... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 that's how it is. If their initiative are lower, like 
if they had a low initiative but then we open the door and then all of a sudden it's their turn in before us then she will end her turn and then they get to act in between the next player so right now they are going to push one and it's of course stupid that i went there but i just i'm just doing it because it's fun so he's going, he, he's going to push one target all adjacent enemies which means he will push her in one and i'm not really sure i think i get to decide now because it's like equal distance to these two spaces of course he will push her onto the trap that's the only thing that makes sense but not i think i get to decide then because it's equal distance so i'll just have a push here she will take three damage which is actually ha you know she has six life so it's Pretty bad to take three damage but uh, so she's down to three then he will do an attack plus one range two so he can also shoot her she might die out of this which is you know okay <laughs> not that smart okay so he's going to do an attack plus one normally his attack is a two so this is a three attack and we draw a card here and it's plus zero so he's doing a damage three damage which would kill her right now but to avoid that happening you can, if, no, she doesn't have any cards in hand. If she did, she could um, dis she could lose a card, which is like l l to the lost pile, instead of taking whatever damage is coming. It doesn't matter how much damage it is. Uh, no matter how much it is, you can just lose a card uh, out of the game for now, and then you will absorb the damage. Or, as in this case, she can take two cards from her discard pile to the lost pile. To not take any damage which is what she has to do otherwise she will be exhausted uh, which would be bad so what do we don't need here um healing is nice i don't like this one i want the attacks and model is pretty good i think we'll lose these two here i'll just place them over there and that was his activation. Now it's time for this guy over here. He's kind of tr like he's behind this whole barricade though. So he will try to push. There's nobody to push. And he will try to attack range 2. There's nobody to attack. So nothing happens. Uh, hey Yogi Bear. Um, well we made this bad game to demonstrate how to not to play. Well that was that was a perfect example of how to not play. I should have just let her stay here. She, or maybe gone here even. He couldn't have attacked her that way. But okay. So now we're going to, at the end of the round, we're going to shuffle this. And then it is time for a short rest to get our cards back. So I might lose this scenario just because I did that, which would <laughs> be kind of funny. So in the short rest, we randomly take one of the cards here from the discard pile. And um, it will be lost. So it's this one with the attack range 3, target 3. It's a good card to lose. I don't need to attack 3 targets at the same time now anyway. So that's gone. The other cards go back to our hand. Same goes here. However, she only has 4 cards. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe that was a bit way too risky, I guess. So she will lose the disarm. Okay. So now we need to choose cards. And I think I need to get Hatchet in here. What's his like best movement card? He can move for five. So we really need to do that. He needs to get in here and do some damage. So if he goes for five, he could go one, two. We want to get the treasure chest as well. So one, two, three, four, five. Then he could kill this guy. Yeah, that's pretty good. So he could do a, well he's going to be next to the enemy though, that's not that great. Let's have him do these two and he can go early. He is strengthened, so that's good. Or actually is he strengthened? Yeah, yeah, she strengthened him last, yeah, before she moved down here. So I think, or maybe I forgot about it because he should lose it at the end of his turn. I don't know. I, I, if I did, uh, if I messed up, I don't know. All right. So, Void Warden, again, damage-wise. But I also want her to pick up the treasure chest. So I guess she will just do these two. 
And then we have the nasty little Wurmling Raiders are going to go at 59. They are not moving this round. They only attack with a range of 2, target 2. So they can attack both of us if they get in the right position. And they will go at 59. So we have 18, 43 and 59. So we still have the same uh, activation order. So let's start with hatchets and move 5. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then he's going to attack for three, range three. So he's going to attack this guy. Now, since he's next to him and he's doing a ranged attack, that attack will be at a disadvantage. But because he's strengthened, he should be at a, a, an advantage. So that's going to, you know, basically zero out. So he's just going to do a normal attack for three. And let's see what he gets here. It's a plus two. Nice. So that's five. It's overkill. We only needed three. But this guy is dead, which was really good there. All right, and that should be a coin as well, where he stood. Then it's time for the Void Warden. So she's going to move for four. She's going to move over to the treasure chest. And she's going to attack. No, wait. He's too far away. So let's have her move instead. Let's have her move there. Uh, that's better. And then she can attack for three. I don't want to kill him though. <laughs> because if I kill him then the scenario ends. I won't pick up the treasure chest. So let's let's just have her go now. It's so wasteful. Like she can't shoot from over here because there's an obstacle in the way. She already got her plus ones. So I don't think she will get a plus two. If she gets a plus two or a doubler then I... No, no, no. Let's let's have a go through the treasure chest. Which means she will not attack. But I want to see what this is. <laughs> I'm too curious. So, this says, when this treasure is looted, look for entry 14 in the treasure thingy. So, where was that? In the glossary. Okay, so in the rule book here. I'm not going to show you all of these because that's a bit spoilerish. 14 says, gain three money tokens. And then we're supposed to... There's little boxes here. I think we're supposed to mark that. I don't think we can get that again. I think it's the one time. I'm just going to mark I'm not going to mark it in the box just to be safe. I'll, I'll look that up later on if you're supposed to mark that in the box. Uh, but again, if you want to you know, be able to sell the game in the future and so on. Oh, Yogi Bear is saying you can shoot through obstacles. I guess you're right. I think it's yeah, it's different if it's obstacles or impassable terrain. I mean, the obstacles are blocked in line of sight, aren't they? Uh, where is that? Should be something about that here. It's so weird because, you know, normally I, I, I will think like I don't need to read the rules in this game. But the thing is that I played hundreds of hours of the digital game on Steam. And then everything is handled by itself. So I got a little bit, you know, uh, lazy with, with that thing. Destroying obstacles. Monsters. I, I know it's in here. Um, where did I see line of sight? I saw line of sight somewhere. So this is not that exciting. Um, line of sight. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Only walls block line of sights. Okay, so, okay, so she could have shot through. The, okay, there we go. I'm learning. <laughs> Thank you, I'm learning. So that would, that would have been better, of course. So let's say she did that. When she stood here, she did her attack of three, one, two, three over her team. That would have resulted in minus one. He would have taken two damage. Uh, obviously, I should have done that. And then she moved and picked up the treasure chest. And there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah, it makes sense. The obstacles doesn't block a ranged attack. It's only walls. Okay. I'll remember that. In the computer game, it would just have been, yeah, I can, you know, I can click him. So then I click him. <laughs> All right. So that was our activation. Now he's going to try to attack uh, but he, uh, range two. He can't do that. He can't move. So nothing happens. And we go to the next round where Hatchet has two cards. But now uh, Void Warden doesn't. She only has one card. 
So she will have to short rest again, which means one of these two, it's kind of hard to randomize two cards, but uh, one of them will be uh, gone. And she will play the other two. So she's at 23. Uh, Hatchet is at 35. All we need to do is kill this guy. He's going to be at 85. He's going to do the push again. And that one. So let's see here. Uh, 23, 35. You don't really need these, but I guess, you know, they could help. Again, especially if you play like four players and there's a lot of monsters out there, then, you know, these could be nice. To just keep track. Oh yeah, the spell weaver tutorial in the digital game is hard. And I should pick up coins, that's true. Alright, so let's have... But I need to kill this guy this turn, otherwise she will go exhausted because she doesn't have any more cards. And he has three more life. So one attack should be enough. Now, just as I say that, there are a, there's, a, there's a miss card in, in the modifier deck. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't want to miss. So the best thing is to see if she can kill him first of all. So she will move um, up to three and model. So she will just go here and he's, yeah, and model because he might attack. And then she will do the attack three, range three. And we will draw from her deck here and it is a plus zero. So she's doing three damage, which means he is dead. And there will be a coin over there. Not that I think we will be able to pick that one up though. And now, well, he's not going to act, but now as Hatchet moves here, he could do... Now I don't even care about the effects on the cards. He will just move here, pick up one coin. By the way, she should have gotten three coins from the picking up the treasure chest. Almost forgot. So she has four, and Hatchet has four. So that's, that's looking good, and we also get some gold when we complete this. So that's the end of the uh, second scenario. Now we're going to do some fun stuff here with the uh, cleanup and the... Uh, the whole item purchase. So first of all, it says, we're going to read the conclusion here. It says, with the foul nest cleansed of those wretched creatures, you take your time searching every nook. Surely the city guard will want to know about this. It can't be safe to have wormlings tunneling through the walls. It's hard enough to fend off their raids as it is. Eventually, you do manage to find an unexpectedly large amount of gold under some rotten wooden boards. Shifting through the treasure, you also find a strange note. In crude scratchings, it details some business arrangement between the Wormlings and someone by the name of Roland. Apparently, in exchange for supplying fresh corpses, Roland would pay the Wormlings in gold. And judging by the amount here, the Wormlings managed to kill quite a few people before you put an end to it. He's probably a necromancer or something. Uh, it's the best lead you have, so it's time to, ref to ferret out this Roland character. After resting at the slate, being a lion, of course. So the reward is 25 gold each. And now we need those um, character sheets. Because this is how you keep track of that. So uh, we get 25 gold each, which we'll mark down here. But we also get the we also get gold from these. And so now we have to check how many how many coins are are there. Uh, let's see here. It's gonna say it in the cleanup. A really good learn to play book, by the way. Step by step, everything. So, congratulations, complete in scenario two. Um, yeah, we also get the black ship, which is the sticker for the third place we're going to. Here it says recording money rewards, counter money tokens. Uh, each money token is worth two gold, and then it will scale up as level up, I think. So, we get 25 per character plus those. And, uh, yeah, okay. So now let's, <laughs> yeah, uh, Roland guy. All right, so now we will get, so we have, uh, what is it, eight. So it's 33 gold. I always found these notes a little bit weird because, like, I have to write 33 and then, you know, you should have something to, um, should have, like, a dry eraser marker almost and laminate this, I guess, would be easier, but... So we each have 33 gold. And then we are going to go to the shop. Basically, we turn, we go to the Sleeping Lion back in, in inside Gloomhaven, I think. So starting now, in between each scenario that you play, characters may buy items, sell items, or trade items with other characters. 
And I always found that a bit weird in the game. Like thematically, we are mercenaries, so we're not really working together, which means that even if it's, a, you know, even though it's a cooperative game and I'm playing solo with two characters, they can't give gold to each other, but they can give items to each other, um, which I've always found weird. So I, when I played through the whole thing, the Gloomhaven, I, I did a house rule so they could just give you know, money to each other as well if they wanted to. Do. Um, okay, item deck. We're going to have 1 to 13. Mm. Oh yeah, this car dividers and so on. I don't use those because I have the E-Raptor insert though. So I will just do it in some other way. So we are going to find the item cards. And we're going to look for uh, 1 to 13. I assume these are, yeah, they're in number order. So, wow, that's a lot of them. It's like half the deck. But these are not available right now. These are like in the store. And I'll just put them with the back in front and I'll put these like this so I remember that I, these are available. So now we can buy items, we can sell items. And then we get half rounded up, whatever we're selling, we can trade it with each other. And it even says here, gold cannot be traded. So basically like to give each other gold in according to the rules, you have to give an item that the other person sells. I just felt that was a bit weird so I, I'm just going to ignore that uh, when I do my playthrough. And item name, gold value, item type, item function. I think I know everything about the items. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I need to uh, go through that. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the eagle eye goggles. So we have 33 gold each. Uh, this is during your attack, gain advantage for the entire attack action. This is a tap thingy, so will use it and then you, when you do a long rest it will refresh or if you have another effect that says you refresh it iron helmet for 20 when attacked consider any um doubler attack modifier card the enemy draws to be a what is that a plus zero instead ah i don't know if that's so good and this is obviously this is like a helmet so we can only have one of these i don't know if i like the iron helmet Chain armor during your turn, gain shield one for the rest of the turn. This is for the rest of the round. This is pretty good. If you see that you're about to get attacked, you can get a shield one and then you can take multiple attacks and it's going to be there for the rest of the round. So that's pretty good actually. Uh, studded leather when attacked before drawing an attack modifier card, the attack against disadvantage for the attack and you gain shield one for the attack. Mm. So that is for, oh yeah, yeah, that is for one attack. This is for the whole round. Some boots. During your movement, add plus one to a single movement. I always like the boots in this game. Wing shoes. You can add jump to the entire move action. So you can jump over stuff, which is really handy with those traps and so on. Uh, heather shield. When damaged by an attack, gain shield one for the attack. Throwing hammer. Uh, during your ranged attack, add stun to a single attack. Oh, I like that. Okay, I'm definitely getting that for hatchet. Poison dagger. During your melee attack, add poison to the single attack. Iron spear. During your single target melee attack ability, attack any one enemy within two hexes. I don't think that's going to be good for these characters. And then we have the potions. Healing potion. Healing for three. Stamina potion. Uh, return one of your discard cards to hand. That's pretty good. And power potion. Add plus one to the entire attack action. These are really good if you have an area of effect attack especially. Because then that will go to the whole attack action. So. Um, uh, I think. And now they can only have one potion right now. I wonder where it says. Let's see it probably says here. Uh, let's see here. Item type. Oh yeah, you can have more of an item, but you can only bring one into an uh, into a scenario. You can only have one small item. That's what the potions are. They could be trinkets and so on as well, but they're the the symbol is for the small items. Okay, so I think we are going to do a. I think we're just going to do a. Eagle eye goggles maybe. She's pretty weak though. Maybe give her an, ar an armor actually. Let's do a chain armor for her. So that costs 30. And then 
the throwing hammer, which is a, a hand, you know, one-handed weapon uh, for the hatchet, which kind of makes sense as well. He can throw that hammer uh, along with his uh, hatchet. All right. So now we're going to need to mark that, which we could have done, I guess, right away before we marked 33. But now they each have three gold uh, left. So I'll just, just remove the, one of the threes. You can actually use some kind of tipex or whatever it's called. We just uh... all right. So that's done. I th oh yeah, we should not mark down here as well. So this is item number uh, eight. I'll mark that down under eight items, just so that like if I save, it's e you know if something gets messed up, I can always return it. And that's number three. And of course, we could sell these items later on as well if we need to, like if we upgrade to better stuff. So now we have some items, which means uh, we'll put these, you know, here. Both of the, you know, this item is a. Come on, camera. This item is a. Uh, you can refresh it. You can use it. You can refresh it when you long rest, which is probably what they will introduce in the next scenario, I guess. Uh, the throwing hammer is a one-time use in that scenario. So we just flip it over when it's used. So you can use it one time during his ranged attack, add stun. And stun is a, such a good effect, especially if there's some boss or some big nasty enemy uh, that we want to take care of. Now we're going to take care of the cards. So we'll put the cards together and we are going to read the next part here, which says that, uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm. All characters should retrieve their first two level one cards from their, uh, from their large box and add them to their pool of available cards. So they will have eight cards in total. And, um, and you can save or continue. We're going to continue. This was really quick. But let's take the cards. So we have decks over here. So she will get the level ones, which are. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Hmm. The first two. So for Void Warden, it's sign of void and close to the abyss. Okay, so it's. A first two in this order that they came in okay so she gets these so now she has uh, eight cards and these are how this is how the actual uh, gloomhaven card look uh, we don't have the little helping text so this is a heal range to target to you removing poison uh, if, you, if you remove poison you get blessed as well wow force all enemies to move one that's good if we have traps and here we have uh, an ally within range three. She's such a support character. <laughs> I think she's better if you're playing like three or four characters actually. So one ally within range three may perform, uh, may gain a shield and then do a move. And um, this says, and then this symbol means that you're gonna have this out chair. So you remember that that's in effect. It has to shield until the end of the round. Uh, this symbol down here means that she can, you know, get this into effect and then at the start of your next five turns, perform a curse range two action. So then you will have one of her little tokens here, and you will move that over. So and she will do a you know curse at the next start of her next five turns, which is really good. So this is an ongoing effect. And when it's done, the card will be lost. Also, this means that she will get a, a XP when she does this. So I guess they introduce XP now into the game as well. All right. So that was her things, and then for hatchet. I'm just going to double check. It's going to say here which cards we should post to get. Favorite and Retrieval, which is the two cards that are there. I haven't uh, moved anything around. So now he has eight cards. So this says, uh, that's a lot of text. Place one of your character tokens on this card. You may add plus three attack to any of your ranged attack by moving the token from this card to the target after the attack ability is resolved. When the target dies, place the token on the hex in which it died. If you loot that hex, return the token to this card. Oh, so basically it's like he's throwing a hatchet, right? Adding plus three. But then when the enemy dies, this is, will end up on the map and then he needs to go and pick it up. We also get two... Um, hmm. He gets two XP, but I don't know how, how this works because, you know, the card stays in play. But then the card is lost. When is the card lost then? Not really sure when the card is lost. Okay, and then he can do a wound, target an adjacent enemy. Wound is really nice as well, and then he can move with a jump. Then he has retrieval, attack two if the target has your favorite token. Oh, 
Okay, that's cool. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the target already has the token on him, then return the token to its card. So then the token comes back. Can he have more than one token here, though? No. I don't think so. And then a move and loop. That's interesting. Uh, we're starting to see his mechanics here. Hey, Bjorn. I I'm not losing. <laughs> but I did, I did mess up a little bit with the rules, I realized. Uh, I made it too easy for myself in the last stream. Not that it really mattered though. It's not like I would have lost if they were level 1. It's just persistent. So, so you, I would never lose the card. Huh? I'll just keep throwing the hatchet go picking it up over and over I guess. Or I can do the retrieval. Oh yeah, okay, so it's optional. I could choose to just lose it, but I would never do that, that's true. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so that's the new cards. Now we have our items, so things are starting to get a little bit more uh, complex and more interesting also. So let's shuffle up the uh, modifier decks. And let's get ready for the third scenario. And while I shuffle, I will tell you that my Kickstarter is live right now. Kickstarter for me and Draco for Board Games with Niravas. And the link is in the description to the video, so you can go check it out. And there's a fun rewards there you can get if you support us. And you know, all support are appreciated. So, you know, even if you just want to support us with a dollar, that's really nice as well. Just get up the backer numbers as well. And okay, so shuffle is done. We will reset health. We're still at level one, so she has six health. And we don't know what enemies we'll, ha we'll have yet, but we'll see. I'm gonna pack this up. And I will take a quick look. I will take a quick look at the scenario three. What is it we need to know here? We'll set it up. It's like scenario two money tokens, treasure tiles, trap tiles. Um, three, damage to three damage traps. Now, instead of Vermi Raiders, we will be dealing with two new enemies, Sealots and Giant Vipers. And it's going to be difficult terrain. Okay, I think we'll just take it step by step then. Uh, oh, are we going to use the supplementary scenario book? Mm. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so this is going to take up a bit more table space here. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so we take a look here at the third scenario. Sorry, Draco, and we should we should actually like put on the third sticker here, which is the black ship that we're gonna have to enter. I'll I'll do that after, later on. It doesn't matter right now. We'll put that on the board. So here's the black ship. Oh, this is cool. So we're on the we start over here at the docks, and then we will go onto the ship. And let's see, I will read, I will read the text here as well. So basically it says that we have, we're using page six and seven, which is these two pages. And then it says, uh, open the supplemental scenario book to uh, part two to find the rest of the scenario text. I'm not really sure we should do that right away. Well, let's see here, introduction. After getting your fill of stew, I got a lot of glare there. Uh, after getting your fill of stew and plenty of rest at the Sleeping Lion, you start off early in the morning. The first order of business is looking for information on someone named Roland. He seems to be making a trade out of buying fresh corpses, and you'd like to know why. It's slow going at first, but you eventually find a pair of wormlings down in the sinking market who seems overly interested in cadaver disposal. After some rough persuasion, they cough up that they, are too, they too are being paid by a named a man named Roland to deliver bodies. They even give you the drop of location, some derelict ship at the old docks. You head down to the pier and look around. It doesn't take long to spot the suspicious vessels. Not only is it leaking some vile black liquid from the hull, but there are two men wearing red robes standing guard outside on the dock. They notice you eyeing them and begin making threatening gestures for you to move along. Looks like getting to the bottom of this is going to require cracking a few more skulls. Well, obviously. So, special rules. Make sure 
characters add their first two ability cards marked one, which we already did. Okay. And then there's a one and a two here. So basically when we reach the one over here, when we enter the ship, and then when we go into the, this room here with the two, then things will happen. We're not going to read that now. We're going to figure that out later. So let's start setting things up here. So we're going to have some things like traps, some coins, and, and you can see here what we need. We need a treasure, which goes over there. It's number 10. Okay. Um, then we're going to have these. Let's remove the the wormlings now, so we get our standees back. Hey, Egoland. Or Elliot. So we're going to find the, the snakes and those cultists, or wherever they are. So let's see, we need the... I'm just going to take these. There's a bunch of these. I'm just going to take some randomly here. And why does it have to be snakes? I'll put one guy there. And one here. And let's see, I don't think, are we going to put these in with a, before we open the door? Um, I don't know. I don't think we should doesn't matter though, like we can still see what's in there. So just make it easier for ourselves by putting them there, I guess. It doesn't say now, but maybe it's always like that. I don't know, I'll just put it in this guy here anyway. You know what's in there. Then the cultists. Whatever they were called, they were called something else, I think. So these are a little bit bigger. I love these standees in this game. They're so nice. There will be one of them standing guard here. And one of them is standing next to him here. Then there. He's not gonna be in the game. He's not gonna be in the game. He's not gonna be gonna have we're gonna need one more. Over there. So that's <laughs> it looks a bit tougher now than the first scenarios, and I hope it is. Then we're going to have, I think we're supposed to place the little, I think we're supposed to place the little markers, like to remind us basically that when we go there, uh, something will happen. We're gonna read that text when we go there. And I think that's everything, but I, I need to check the supplementary are we really going to open that right away? I kind of hope we were going to open that after a while so we don't know what it's going to contain. I'm going to check here again. Scenario three. Uh, traps. Okay. Cellots Cel is what they're called. Cellots and giant vipers. Oh, yeah, yeah. We need, the, we need a card for them as well, of course. So let's put these back. And I have these in... Uh, I think they have these in order of alphabetical order. Let's see, here we go. Are the basic guys? Yeah, the basic cellots. I guess we should have the basics now. Hmm. Oh yeah, we should have the basic. Okay, so basic cellot and then basic um, giant pipe. It's not that many in this game. In Gloomhaven, I had like a real like a file catalog that I put all the cards in. I don't think I need to in this game. So there we have four. Okay, so we have the card for the enemies. We have the standees in place. Now we need to find their um, sort of monster cards as well. And we also need a second of these holders for the cards. So let's see, are they in? Yeah, they're in uh, here. There's the cellots. 
And where's the snakes? Um, giant viper. There they are. Okay. So I assume they're level one. Yeah, everything is level one. Obviously, since we and we have leveled up either. So we have the sellouts. They have six health. Uh, move for two. Attack for two. They and the no, we don't have any elite guys. Giant vipers. They. Uh, have a poison so they have three health move for two attack for one but they will poison and the elite guy has two attack and five health instead he's over there so again now it's going to take up more table space but i don't think we need the magic thing right now i think that's going to be introduced later so we'll just put these here and we'll have their modifiers here on the side and we'll just have their cards like this so that's those, that's those. And I'll shuffle this up. And yeah, so before we have opened, we're gonna start over here. And before we have opened this door, then we don't reveal the Viper card because they're not acting yet. Okay, so we have the modifiers. Hard to hit everything on camera here. I'll try to pan around. And so let's see here we have the shuffle these as well. And then it says about the supplementary scenario book. It will only be used to display extra text that does not fit in the main two page spread. When you finish the scenario, the conclusion and the scenario rewards can be found in the indicated page. Yeah, 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 so we're not going to use it in this scenario, but after the scenario is done, like on this page, there's nothing about the conclusion and the rewards, so that is going to be in the supplementary book. But in later on in the game, uh, the maps could be bigger because we could have used the supplementary to like get more map over here, which seems really cool as well. Right, then we have the difficult terrain. We're going to talk a little bit about that. It takes two movement points at the same time to enter a hex, which has actually inspired me when I made my own Draco game. <laughs> which works sort of the same uh, when you um, go into mods and so on. Um, okay, then we have the section breaks. Yeah, so when we get... We, we only read this when we open these doors. And now we're also going to get experience. So this is like a new action mechanics. So some actions give you experience. And yeah. Active bonuses. Now it explains the persistent bonus. And the slots, I think I have this pretty much down. And the shields and the jump, I know how that works. And poison, wound, curse, bless, no problems. And the long rest, which will heal us for two. When you do a long rest, you will use your whole turn to do the rest instead of the short rest, right? But you will heal for two, you will get your card uh, refreshed, like this one here. And you will also, the card that you have to lose from your you know, from your discard pile when you get the cards back, that one you get to choose instead of it's random. So that's good. And multiple targets. Um, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, so this explains poison. Okay, I think I have everything down here. I'm gonna go back to the rule book if, if need be, but um, it should be okay. So we have set the health, we have the modifiers are shuffled, those texts are shuffled, we have our new cards now, we have 8 cards, which is good. We should have 10 and 11 in the full game, but it's building up to that. And then these guys are out here, we need to go open the door, and then we will see what happens uh, with that room. Alright. This is so much fun. <laughs> I mean, this game, even if I'm you know, even playing the tutorial, and, and like, which is good actually, because it's like a reminder as well. I mean, I play so many games and time passes and you know, it's been a while. So good even for for a, someone who has played Gloomhaven a lot. It's nice to just have this reminder, go through it step by step for the first five missions. And then it's going to be like 20 more missions where it's the full game, uh, which is going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. 
it's interesting to see the new mechanics in the game because like new the story and you know things happening that that's going to be so fresh from the you know the, the great it was a great experience playing like 90 scenarios in gloomhaven but it took forever and at some points it got a bit tedious it kept doing the same thing over and over and so on but now it all feels fresh again and i love this book as i said all right so let's get started let's start with uh, hatchet i think it's a good uh, order to just do that and i think we can see everything fairly decent here uh, i could put the camera higher up maybe for next time if it's a bigger map but so i have the um, we have the thing i want to do this thing with the axe that seems fun throw it and, and then pick it up and all that so then we would play this And what would we do for the bottom part? Um, we could immobilize. I don't know if... I mean, these guys are melee, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we could push them, which doesn't make sense right here. We could... Oh, we could do this move too and just do some damage. I guess that's a good one. Let's do these two together and let's do it early. So you know, before the act, we should also remember that at some point we can stun someone. I think like maybe the elite snake or something, we can stun it later on. The Void Warden, so she has her, I mean, cursing is really nice. A really cool thing with curses as well. Is, I'm gonna explain it right now. So when we curse someone, we have these cards here. Um, so here we have the bless, which gets your extra plus twos or uh, two times. So the curses, I'll put them up here because we will use them later on. They are extra miscards and they are one time. So if he makes a curse, like a curse action against this guy, then we will take a curse card, put it in the modifier deck for the monsters. Even if he dies before it comes up, the card is still in there and you can keep loading them up there in there. It's like 10 or something you can get to. So they will get a lot of misses later on in the scenario, which could really help us. So I think I wanted I, I want her to do that. But it's range two though. Because the start of her next five turns, it's a range two. So she can't do it from where she well, they are probably gonna come over though. Hmm. Uh, or or she moves and attacks right now. That's also an option. I could sit, you know, if I play off cam, I could sit here for like five minutes and just go over different options and imagine it in my head. But when I do these videos, I'm trying to have a little bit more, like it's still pretty easy mode, right? So I don't think, oh, I'm not gonna say too much. Maybe we'll do fail. Mm. I need her to move, so. Oh, she could actually muddle. That's that's good as well. Let's have her move and muddle. How much health? They have six health. So they're probably going to stick around for a little while. So she will go at 23. Uh, Hatchet is going at 17. The We're not doing the Vipers right now because they're not here. And the Zealot is doing 77. He's going to move minus one, which means he will move one step and then attack. But he's also going to poison us. That's going to be... Oh, that's annoying. All right. So he's going to go last. Now, we need to do this as well. I forgot about this. I'm not used to this thing because that's, this is new to me. The whole system with these. I'm not used to that. Uh, let's try to find... This is probably an easier way to organize this, I guess. I would actually, I would, I should put these. And now I'm gonna start talking about something that you don't see. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna put these with the actual, this is not that exciting for a stream, but you have to bear with me uh, because it's gonna be so annoying later, later on. I'm gonna keep forgetting to do this and let's just do it right away. And I can recognize most of these. Here's the sellouts, by the way. And dun, 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 dun. black sludge. I think what's a black sludge look like? I'm not really sure. 
Um, Roaming Raiders, we just have those. The boss, we just put that there. Because the bosses are in the other thing. Uh, Living Spirits are over there. Wormling Scout is probably these little guys. The Blood Monstrosity. Not really sure because that's something new. Um, I'll just put it here for now. And the Vipers, we need that. Okay, so I'm not going to do the other ones now. But you know, if you don't have the insert as well, um, I've seen someone put them in bags. So you have like a bag with everything that is related to one type of enemy. But uh, I really like this insert though. All right, so um, now let's get back to the game. That wasn't that exciting. So she, let's see, Hatchet will move first, then Void Warden. The Vipers are not in yet, let's put it over there. So there we go, we have the order set and let's start with Hatchet. So, let's see, maybe I have it like that. So we're going to, I need to get these painted by the way. Uh, sadly though, Martin, which is my friend and basically my painter <laughs> he moved so he's not close by now all right so let's play this the favorite and as soon as we play it actually so this is going to be an ongoing thing i'm just going to put it on his card i think or like on his mat here so this is going to give him two xp xp right away and when you get xp uh, after a while you will level up and then you will get more health and you will get perks and and all that cool stuff and then he's going to do the bottom of this one, which is to move two. To, uh, all adjacent enemies suffer one damage. So he's just going to go one, two, which is next to this guy. So this one will take one damage. He is number one. So one out of six on him. And this card will stay here because it's active. So it says, place one of your character tokens. So we'll place a little hatchet on here. And then the next time I do an attack, I can... Add plus three if it's a ranged attack by moving the token off the card onto the enemy. You probably you can just place it on the side or something. And when the enemy dies, then it will end up in the hex where the enemy was, and then I can go pick it up and return it to the card. Okay. Then it's time for the Void Warden. So she is going to move for three. He will go one, two, three. She's going to muddle one of these. So she's going to muddle the one that is not damaged, number six. Then she can disarm with ranged three. So let's disarm the other guy, I guess. Number one is disarmed. Then she can force a target to move two. Well, let's see, they're going to move just one space. Now she disarmed him. Oh, this is like overkill. But it doesn't matter. She can move. She can force this guy to go one, two, but he will still move one space, so he can still hit hatchet. So and that that part doesn't matter, I guess. I really like that effect, though. Like if you can make someone move onto a trap, that is such a, such a good uh, effect. Like mind control, just force them to take a step. All right, so now it's time for the Celots. I think I pronounced that correctly, Celot. It's a weird word. So this one will go first. Like these in here will not act because the do door is closed, right? Yeah, they're just standing there. They actually, actually, it's like they're not there yet. We don't know that they're there because we haven't looked in inside. So number one, we go first. He is disarmed though. So he's trying to move. Uh, he doesn't need to move because his focus is next to him. And he's trying to attack, but he can't, so he's just going to uh, lose the disarm. Which is really good, because otherwise he would have poisoned us. Sadly, though, the other guy, he will find a focus, which will be Void Warden. She is next to him. And he will attack for minus one, so he will attack for one with po and poison. So she will be poisoned no matter what. And let's see what he, he will do here. So he has uh, one in attack. He has models. He needs to draw two cards. So, uh, oh, that's nice. He has one minus one or plus one. He has to go with the minus one since he's muddled. He has dis disadvantage. Uh, so he's not doing any damage. 
He did one, min mi two, minus one, minus one. She's not doing any damage. She did get poison though, which is, is bad. I'll explain that in a minute. And now he will lose its end of his turn. He will lose the model. So that was their activation. Now the poison means that she, uh, whenever she takes damage, she will take an extra damage as long as it's there. If she get healed, the only thing that will happen is she will remove the poison instead of healing whatever damage she had taken earlier. So that was the first round. Let's do the second round. Let's see what we can. Uh, this looks a bit uh, rough, this scenario. I mean, we need to get through these guys. See what happens in here. It's going to be slow to move in here. I do want to treasure and yeah, we need to kill everything. So attack for two. And here it says, if the target has your favorite token, yeah, but we don't, we want to do a ranged attack first. I mean, he can basically, you know, plus three, he can kill someone with attack three here. So that's good. And why not do this one as well? Add plus one to all your attacks this turn. And what is she doing? She has... Well, now she could start cursing them, so that's good. And with the top action, I want an attack. Oh, now he she could make now since we're near, you know, we we need to have hatchet. I guess these two are really not really matching together that well because hatchet is a ranged attacker, but a lot of her cards are like make one ally may perform a uh, you know close up attack. So it's actually going to work now because he's next to one of them. So let's have her go this way. So she is fi she's at 15, he's at 35, and these guys will be at 46. So they go last. And they will attack plus one, range two, and muddle. Oh, that's annoying. They're gonna muddle us as well. But let's see here. So he's first. Yes, this, no, she's first now. Okay. So she's going to start off. This is gonna be interesting. I like that she has curses. That, that's one of my favorite effects in the game. So she's going to start off with this, and this is an ongoing thing, so we're going to put it down right here. And it's going to, we're going to put a little marker here, it's not activated yet, but... So when she, at the start of her next five turns, so basically we need to keep her within two spaces of an enemy uh, as well. Otherwise it's going to be waste, wasted. So five times she's going to curse, she's not going to do it right now though. And then she's going to do this top part here, which is... One ally within range two, which will be Hatchet, may perform an attack of four. Um, all right, so he's going to do an attack of four. So we're going to draw from his uh, modifier deck. It's going to attack number one. That's the only one that's next to him. And it is a plus zero. So he just did uh, four damage, which is not bad at all. And he already had one, so he's up to five. So he's almost dead. Okay, then it is Hatchet's turn. He is going to do, he's going to play this one, which says add plus one attack to all your attacks this turn. So this is like ongoing sort of, it's, it's for this turn only. And then he's going to do an attack of three, range three is going to hit the uh, number six here. So his attack is three plus one, so it's four. And he will throw the, the hatchet at him. So that gives plus three, so it's, he's up to seven. It's really strong. So, <laughs> so he's attacking for seven. And he gets a plus zero, so he's doing seven damage. This guy has six health, so he is dead. And the little, you know, the token will end up, the hatchet will end up on the floor together with a coin. And uh, yeah, nice. Right now, it's time for the sellout. So he can attack for plus one, range two. Oh, he's not moving, which means he will be at disadvantage because he is doing a ranged attack at one of us. Again, it's a tiebreaker. He will go for the one that acted first. So he will go for the Void Warden. And he's attacking for... That's not good because she's poisoned as well. He's attacking for plus one. So it's normally two, but now it's three. So it's three. And he needs to draw two cards since he has disadvantage. It's both plus zero. So she, he's doing three damage to her, but it's actually four since she is poisoned. So she's down to two health left. Wow, it's not looking good there. <laughs> that was... Way harder than it should be, uh, this scenario so far. Okay. 
And he's also going to muddle her. So she's not only poisoned, she's also muddled. Okay. That was the round. Now, let's do the second round here. We're going to... We just need to kill him. He needs to get his uh, hatchet back. He could do this attack too. Oh no, the Torque doesn't have the token. The token is on the ground. So we need to pick it up again because it's really good to have. We could open the door. He only has one life left, so. But I'm thinking that she should heal herself, maybe. He can do this attack, which is like, could hit two guys, which could have been nice, you know, in another situation, but he could do that, and then he could do a loot as well, so he can pick up those coins that will be on the ground. See, can she heal herself? Yeah, he, she has her heal three. Uh, you are an ally. Yeah, she's going to heal herself. And... Oh, she's actually going to heal herself twice. You'll see why in a second. So she's going at 43. He's at 25. And this Sellout guy will go at 27. Oh, he was quick. And he's going to heal himself and move and attack. All right. That was his strong card because this is the one that we will reshuffle the deck with later on. So let's put that to the side so we remember that. And okay, so 27. So he's going to go in between our characters. So let's start with Hatchet. You know, if Hatchet can just kill him now, then he's not never going to act, which uh, would be nice. I think we can do it. So we'll just do the attack of three. And when it's like this, the gray space is where you are, or your character, and then he can hit like that. So he could hit two uh, spaces next to him if there were enemies there. It's only one. So he's going to attack for three. Minus one, doesn't matter. He's doing two damage. This guy only has one life left. So he is gone. We put a coin there. And then he'll play this card. Uh, move one, loot one. So he's going to move here. Gonna loot, which means he picks up both these coins here. But sadly, he didn't get his hatchet back, though it's still on the ground. <laughs> we'll have to do that next round. I mean, he could have gone over there, but no, it's better that he looted. Okay. Oh, wait, will he, is he actually picking it up with a loot action? Oh yeah, yeah, I did loot the hex. Yeah, yeah, he picks it up. It's included. It says if you loot that hex, which he just did. So that makes his loot effects even better. He has a few of these loot effects. Oh, cool. All right, so he has the token back. Perfect, perfect. So, you know, you can loot it by going there. We can also loot it by doing the loot action. All right, so he's not going to act because he's dead. Now we'll do... And now it's, this is one of those cases. If, if she goes and opens the door now, then... Uh, this guy in here will get to act because he's on the same card sort of he should have been you know Which doesn't really matter because he would heal himself. He's not damaged. So Huh, but anyway, she is going to heal herself for two Which means she will only remove the poison. That's all that happens the first time you heal yourself if you're poisoned Second time she will heal herself for three now the healing will happen and she will go up to five Health nice then she will lose her model at the end of her turn and actually, at the start of her turn, this this happened. So, the token went on here, and she tried to curse someone within range two. There wasn't anyone there, though. Um, so, kind of wasteful, but, you know, it's cool anyway. Uh, if, you know, if he had been there, we would have put a curse card into the modifier deck of the monsters for, for this uh, whole scenario. Okay. So, let's set up for the next round. Now, we're going to open the door. He can move for five, so that's good. You can move in here and just start hitting these guys. We should actually reshuffle this as well, because that came up. So yeah, so we'll go in there and just blast away. And now we will have the vipers in here as well. 
So we'll do that at 18. The timing doesn't really matter that much now. Oh, it's sort of, but I mean, nobody else is going to act in between, sort of, so. And here we'll do a 49. We'll just figure something out later on. So, uh, 49, and we don't have any other enemies right now. They will come into play very soon. So basically, we don't draw any cards for them now because there's no enemies. So he's going to start. He's going to move five. He's going to move one, two, three. Good. And now we're going to flip this. So the door is open. And that means we will read this text. So we'll see what it says. You burst into the cargo hold and a foul smell hits you in the face. A river of stinky black liquid flows through the ship, pouring between the various cracks in the hull. The source appears to be beyond the far door, but first you have to fight your way past more ruffians and their pets. Right. So let's do that. Mm. <laughs> uh, hey JB, that, that was actually a funny uh, joke. I'm going to read it to the viewers. So JB says he had a party of bards in the D&D uh, game. Kept getting kicked out of towns. So they wouldn't stop looting. Uh, 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 nice. All right. So now, next up, uh, he is going to do his uh, attack 3, range 3. He's going to hit the snake, I think. He's going to go 1, 2, 3, hit the snake for 3. But, of course, he's going to throw his hatchet as well. So that is 6 in total. Well, that's kind of overkill, actually. But I think I don't want to throw the hatchet over here, because then I go, need to go over there and pick it up. I'd rather go towards the chest. So let's do it. He might get a minus 2, whatever. So, 6 attack, and he is drawing a plus here. Okay, so he's doing 6 damage. The snake has 3 life, so he's taken out immediately. And we will put a coin here. Alright. Now that he ends his turn, now we will check what these guys will be doing. So, we will flip up the Zealot. He is going to go at 77, move and attack and poison. And the snake... The other one that is still here, he's going at 43, which is the same as, uh, no, she was 49. Okay, so he's actually in between. He's going to go before her, and then the Zealot will go last. And he's going to move with jump and attack. Uh, it's nasty creatures. Right. So then we have, da -da -dum. so then we have the snake. So he's going to do... Move plus one. So he normally moves two, but now he can move for three. And he wants to get adjacent, and he has jump, so he doesn't need to care about this uh, rough terrain. So he will go one, two, three. And then he will attack for minus one. So normally it would be one, but now it's uh, zero. So he's attacking for zero. Minus one, so he's not doing any damage at all. Nice. Okay, then we have the... Void Warden. And let's see what could she she could kill him actually. So let's have her do this, but let's do the basic move instead. So she will move one two into the door opening. Then she will do an attack three for range three. She will hit the snake for three plus zero. So that will take it out. Get another coin. That's good because it's good to get rid of one type of enemy. So now in this room, we only have this guy left. So I'll just put the little token back there to remind us. And now it's time for the Zealot. He's going to move minus one, which is one. And now I get a bit... Now we have a rule situation. So he's only going to move for one, but it's rough terrain. So you need two to move into rough terrain, right? So I think that means he's not moving at all. Hmm. A figure must spend two movement points, yeah, when it enters the hex. Uh, it, it, it even says here, the extra movement it also, is also taken into consideration when determining monster focused. Um, so, um, yeah, he can't move. And then he's going to try to attack. He wouldn't get to us anyway, but, you know, so and this is like blocked and that's... I don't think, I'm not really sure, I don't think this square is in the in play. Like these half squares. 
I'm not really sure. They they don't exist on the Illumaven maps, obviously. I, I don't think so. I don't think they're in play. I think... What do you guys think in the chat? Hey, I guess. So the question is, these little... No, it's not hex. It's not even a half hex. It's just, it's just artwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just artwork and it, it wouldn't exist if you had the map from Gloomhaven. So it can't be a, a space. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to ignore that. There's no way that that can be a space. In the, so yeah, he can't move anywhere. I don't think he would have moved that way anyway. So the round is over. Now we're going to do a new round. Now we need to rest. Now if we want to, we could do a long rest now instead of a short rest. Which means the next round, the only thing you would do is stand around resting. Which gets you to health, gets you back your item, and also lets you choose which cards to discard. But I don't care about that. Let's just do a short rest right now. So Hatchet will lose this one or he will take a damage. I'm going to take a damage for him. I don't want to lose his ranged attacks. So he's going down to 7 health. And then we'll, he will lose this instead, which is a heal. So that, that's pretty okay. I don't think he needs to heal himself. All right. Then for the Void Warden, let's see what she will lose. It's a bit annoying that she can't really curse anyone because they're too far away. Um, in this scenario, at least. She will lose her uh, loot strength. And yeah, that's okay. I don't want to take damage with her anyway. So let's see. We need to kill this guy. And I do want to get that treasure chest. And he needs to pick up his axe as well. So he needs to move a bit. And it's rough terrain. So he needs to go like 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh uh, wow. Look at this. Move 4 and loot 1. That's perfect. Perfect in this situation. And then he can do a ranged attack as well. Just hit this guy before he starts moving. Alright. Let's do that. She could go, actually if she goes really late, he might move within two spaces so that she can curse him. So I want her to go really late. So let's have her do that one. And maybe, maybe that one, we'll, we'll do it like that. So she's moving at 89. Uh, Hatchet is at, at 25. The enemy will be somewhere in between, I guess. We'll see. The Zealot is going to go at 19. Oh, he's really quick. So he's going first, actually. That's okay, actually. All right, so uh, he will move and attack minus one, but he will also curse. That's nasty. Okay, so let's do his thing first. He is going to move... Uh, plus zero, which means he moves at two, which means he can get there. Then he will attack, but he can't reach anyone. And he will curse, but he can't reach anyone. So that's that's okay. But he, he's still not in range for her, though, <laughs> which was bad. All right. Then let's do the... That didn't help at all with my strategy. Uh, sometimes it, it is like this in this game. So let's have him attack for three, range three. And we draw a card, and it's plus one, so he's attacking for four, which will do four out of six damage to number four. Then he's going to move for four. This card is uh, lost if he, you know, but it's still worth it. So he's going to move for four. So he's going to go one, two, three, four. Then he's going to loot for one. And this card is lost, by the way. Which means he will pick up everything here. Uh, coin and the chest and everything. So I think he needs to carry that around. We can just uh, put it back. But he does get the coin and it gets his hatchet back. And now we are going to read 10 here for the treasure. Let's see what we got. Oh, five gold. That wasn't that exciting. I was hoping for an item. but. Five gold to Hatchet. Hatchet is by the name Draco, by the way. Uh, I'll just call him Hatchet. All right, so you got five gold. 
and he looted everything there and that was his turn and now we have mrs void she can't curse anyone curses she says there's no one to curse but she's moving the token she will get some xp out of this at least then let's have her i was gonna do this forcing an enemy to move one so you could move on to the trap but now he's too far away <laughs> uh I think she just needs to go and hit him, really. So it doesn't matter which order she plays the cards. One of the cards will let her move for two. And one card will let her do a standard attack for two. So she's doing an attack for two. Plus one. So she's doing three damage, which is enough to kill him. So that was good. Put out the coin. Nice, nice. So now we kill all the enemies in this room. We just need to go open the door. And yeah, right, let's set up for the next round. This game is so cool, and I really love how it's, I love this map once again, like how easy it is to, you know, I get the exact same feeling, it is, it is Gloomhaven, I'm playing Gloomhaven, but it's just so smooth and streamlined and everything. All right, let's have her, let's see, he needs to move one, I think he's just gonna, he's just gonna go straight in here, he's gonna stun the snake, why not? And we can throw the axe at him as well. So that's that's really strong. So he can go. But it's, it's going to take two. So he needs to move one, two, three. He's not going to get there actually. Huh. All right. Well, in that case, let's just have him save card for the next round, sort of. Let's have him do this. Here, then he can move to move up here and they go one two three yeah i guess that works it's good that she gets some time to catch up as well we don't want them to be too far away separated so she could move for four i guess that's the best one she could go one two three four get over there and is there anything else she would like to do then i don't think so let's put it like that there's no enemies so this will be a quick round and we don't need to do that stuff at all uh, really so she will move uh, one two three four she's not doing anything with the top part of the card he's going to move um, one two I guess doesn't really matter and that's the round and next round he has his cards ready here and so does she she will go first she will move Oh, that trap is annoying. That's why it's there, obviously, in that space. That's really in the way. Actually, I want her to go after him. So let's do it that way instead. Let's think this through a little bit. So he will go move three. So he's going to go one, two, three. He's going to open the door. So things uh, we get things rolling. And then we are going to read passage number two here so it says the smell gets even worse when you finally open the door to the back cabin more of these robed madmen are performing some sort of incantation over an altar piled high with severed limbs and unidentifiable mounds of flesh with the flies buzzing and the strange guttural howls all you want to do is get as far away as possible but you have a job to do uh, you commence with the killing all right, they're doing some kind of ritual in here. So uh, door is opened. He's going to finish his turn, which means he can do an attack of one, range three, target three, and muddle. So he can hit both of them. It's a, just a small attack, but I want to muddle them. That's why I'm doing this. Um, all right. So let's do the first one to the cultist. It is going to be a minus one, so there's no damage at all. Let's do it to the snake. It's going to be a plus one, so that's two damage. So that's not bad. He has five health though because he's an elite. Two damage over there, and both of them are muddled. That was the important part. It doesn't really matter which number they are now because there's only one of each. All right. Then now, when his turn is over, we're going to check when what they will be doing. They will be acting now. So uh, I think we will reshuffle this because it did show that I forgot about that. We should have reshuffled this deck at the end of the turn when that happened. So now. We're not going to reshuffle that, but we're going to pull up these. So the snake will go at 43, and the salad will go at 27. 
So where are we? Uh, 49. They will both act before she does, which is good because I want them to come closer. Maybe she can shoot. I don't think so, though. I think it's too far away. All right. So, Mr. Sellot, what do you want to do? He wants to heal himself. It doesn't matter. He's not hurt. Move plus one. So he can move for three, which means he can actually get here. So he can go one, two, three. Then he is going to attack minus one. Oh, he wants to do a ranged attack, by the way. So then he doesn't want to get there. Range two, so he needs to get move one space, but he doesn't want to. He, 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 they only move as much as they need to when they do the ranged attack. So he's attacking for minus one, which is uh, one. <laughs> two minus one is one. So he's attacking for one, and he, he has disadvantage because he's muddled. So it's a plus one and a plus one. Okay, so he's doing plus one. So he's doing two damage in total. And let's do two damage to hatchet. So he's down to five health. Then the a uh, Lucius model, the Viper activates. He will move plus one with jump. So that is three in total, and he wants to get nearby. So he's gonna he's, he's just ignoring terrain, he's just going up there. And then he's gonna do an attack minus one. It's two normally, so it's one. Two minus one is one. And that's one, and it is plus zero, so he's doing one damage, but he's... No, he's not poisoning, he's just doing one damage. All right, so Hatchet is down to four health now. That's okay. I think we can take these guys out. Now now it's time for, for the Void Warden. So she's going to move three and muddle. She's going to go one, two, three. Because then she can model within three, so she... Oh, and he lost model at the end of his turn, but now he gets modeled again. Because she's modeling him. And then she's doing an attack three, range three, so she's going to hit the guy as well. She has um, line of sight, because you can count it through the door uh, from her corner to that. I mean, I'm, Hatchet is sort of in the way, but uh, no, that doesn't matter. And so that is an attack of three, minus one. It's an attack of two, so he goes up to four out of the five. All right, he almost died. So now back to new round, and let's do remember to do these things. We should reshuffle because of that symbol. Let's do that first of all. That's the first thing you do. Still haven't seen any doubles or misses so far in the game, which is kind of interesting. But it's like you don't reshuffle the modifier deck until you get one of those, so it's like it's building up towards it. And the same goes for the Sellot. And I really need to sleeve these cards. I have to do that. The problem is though that I don't have any more sleeves lying around. But I have like 20 games that are sleeved. That I might, you know, I, some of them I will not play for a long time and so on. So I'm thinking I'm just going to de-sleeve something. Just sleeve this uh, while I play it. But it's going to take a little while. Okay, so... That's done. Now we need to decide on resting, and I think. Wait. I forgot to use the hatchet. I could have thrown the hatchet on one of those guys. But I forgot it. So it is what it is. I can use it next time and just take out the cellot. So let's short rest. Let's see what we will lose. It's going to be. Uh, well, he's already he's down to four health, so I don't want to lose any more health. So we'll lose that card. It's okay. And here we will have uh, I'm not going to read that uh, joke, Michael uh, Mikael, because uh, YouTube uh, might not approve. It. <laughs> I get the I get the thing. Okay, so uh, she loses that one, and let's see here. If, yeah, so he just needs to do a strong attack. He only has one life left, so, yeah, let's do that. I think it's when it says move two, it says move up to two hexes away. I think he can stand still and still get the other effect. I think so. So let's do those two. He's at 35. She will go at hmm. 
she, if everything goes according to plan, she just needs to go pick up some coins, actually. But you never know in this game. That might not be the case. I think she will go like a little bit later just to see here what happens. So she will go at 72. And sellout guy, 77. Snake is 58. So we start off with hatchet, then we do the snake. Then it is Void Warden, and then finally it is Sellot. And let's start with Hatchet then. So he's doing a... Yeah, I'm gonna play it like this. I think it is like this. When it says move two, you don't need to move up two. You can move zero or one, but you still get the other effect. So he's gonna do that, which means all adjacent enemies suffers more damage. The snake only has more life, so he's gone. And put a coin here. That was an easy elite, actually. But they're, 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 like the snakes are not that strong, but they do a lot of damage instead. So then he's going to do an attack three, range three, but now he's going to throw the his favorite, his favorite hatchet, over at this guy. So that's going to be an attack of, oh, these tokens are really fiddly. I wish there was something a bit more sturdy, but okay. So he's going to, um, that's like the only complaint I have with the Gloomhaven and with this game is these little tokens, they are so small and flimsy okay he's gonna do an attack of six uh so let's see what he draws and it's minus two that's bad so it's only four so the guy survives he has six health i was hoping to just kill him straight out but okay all right so uh vipers are out so they're not gonna act it's the void warden let's see could she finish this off um I mean, now she is in the difficult area, so now it only takes one step to move around inside the sword. It says it takes two movement points to enter, unless you have jump. So she could go one... No, 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 then she needs to enter a new area, so that can't work anyway. <sighs> hmm. Well, I'll just do what, you know, I'll, she'll just move here. And she, he's within range 3, so she will model him. And then she can heal for 2. Uh, target 2. So she will heal both herself. Up to 6. And she will heal Hatchet. Up to 6. And if one of these now had removed a poison, they would have gotten blessed. Which is a really cool effect on this card. So then it is time for the seller. He, he will move minus one. So he moves one, which means he can't go anywhere because of that difficult terrain. And then he would attack and poison, but he can't do it. It's, it's been really beneficial for me with this terrain here. But he will lose model at the end of his turn anyway. If I had planned that, I didn't need to model him because I could have seen that would have happened. But anyway, so next turn. Hatchet is ready. And let's see here. One ally, attack two, range three. That's good. And she could move. Okay. So she's going 43. I have forgotten about this. This should have moved like twice. The curses. She never had a chance to curse anyone, but at least she got an XP out of it. Um, so she has one XP. But it's a really cool card if she's like surrounded by a lot of enemies. All right, so 43, 46, the Sellot is going at 46. If it's the same, then we go before them. So it is this way. She goes first. She will do this. One ally within range 3, which will be Hatchet, may perform an attack 2 with range 3. So he's going to attack for uh, 2. And plus 2, so that's it. Wow, nice. Just took that guy out straight away. And then she is going to move for four. She'll go one, two, three, just to pick up this coin. Well, that was her turn. Don't need to worry about him anymore. So Hatchet can go... Oh, now I would wish I had a... 
Oh, we can... No, he can't move. Uh, okay, he's gonna do this. I would ne Normally, I wouldn't do this, but in this situation, he can move for once. He can move into the trap. He will take three damage. Which doesn't matter at all, because we just finished the scenario. And then he can loot one, so he can pick up this coin. <laughs> so, that was kind of weird. Because he couldn't move, I was thinking he was going to go over here, but he can't, because it takes two steps to move into the difficult terrain. So, yeah. Alright. So, that's it. Actually, I should have made it so that she got another turn, because she would have gotten one more XP. That is too late, I already killed the guy. So, that is the scenario done. Let's wrap it up. That's really fun, this. Uh, you know, two more scenarios to go. Uh, I will stream later on this week. I will stream those two as well. And then I will probably play off cam because I kind of want to play. I like when I solo play. I like playing solo with the stream and everything. But also it's nice to just be able to, like, I, I can't stream for like 10 hours straight. But I can play for 10 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, because it, it, it takes more energy to, to do the streams, obviously. Uh, all right, anyway, so what do we need to do here? Let's uh, do, let's do step by step by the guide so I don't miss anything because I'm... Uh, let's see, scenario three. Congratulations, you completed it. Read a conclusion. Yeah, yeah, we need to do that. All right, so let's open this one here now, the supplementary scenario book and find number two. Hmm... Uh, for page two and the black shape. Okay, conclusion. It certainly doesn't give you pleasure sif sifting through the human remains on the altar, but it does end up proving useful in between the bouts of vomiting. You find a necklace, uh, one Sandy described in detail as never leaving the neck of her husband. Oh, that's the blacksmith. With this in his hand, with this in hand, you can bring at least some peace to the blacksmith's widow and inform the city guard about this whole situation. Still, you have a sneaking suspicion this isn't the end of the trail. These robed men were certainly all underlings, which means Roland is still out there. One could make the argument that this is the city guard's job, but you search the cabin of the ship anyway and find a curious map. It is a crude depiction of the boiler district and one building is clearly marked. Surely, it couldn't hurt to check it out. So each character gains one perk. Oh, that's gonna be cool. And then we get a new location, which is location number four. So we each get a perk. So we go into this one again here. Um, it says, refresh your character. I'll do that off screen. Um, record money. I'll do that off screen as well. I could actually do that right away because we didn't get any money. So we only have this. So that's eight. It's eight for hatchet. Uh, so he has a total of 16. And then she got uh, two, so she has five in total. All right. And let's see here. Ex oh, they should mark in the experience as well. Well, then, okay. So now it says note the experience total that you got. Completing the scenario and all other scenarios in this book reward six experience. Okay. So he got a total of eight. And she has a total of seven. And we need to get to 45 to level up to level two, which we can see here. Uh, so she has seven, she needs to get to 45. All right, some progress has been made. Then we take a look at perks. And this is really fun in this game. I really love this system. So with the perks here, uh, we are going to receive a perk as a scenario reward. Normally you get that uh, when you level up. So when you gain a perk, you choose one of these modifiers. Um, dun, 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 dun. And then it explains how advantage and disadvantage works with these cards. Uh, all right. So, perks for uh, the Void Warden here. So she can do a uh, remove two minus one cards, remove one minus two card, replace one plus zero card with one plus one and uh, bringing some uh, darkness magic in the air. 
or uh, one with the sun uh, energy or like uh, magic and replacing a minus zero, minus one with one plus one heal one ally. Oh, so she can heal that way. Or she can add one plus one heal one ally. That's cool. So she can heal by just drawing when she draws her uh, modifiers. She can add one plus one poison card, which is really cool. Add one plus three card or add one plus one curse card. Oh, wow. All of these sounded pretty good. I think what we'll do start off here though is the basics. So we'll just remove two. We're just going to remove two minus uh, one cards. Uh, that's always good to have done. So we'll just take two of these and remove from the deck. So uh, that's never bad. Okay, let's remove these. Then for Hatchet, he has the same there. He has Muddle, Poison, Wound, Immobilize, Push, Stun, Stun. He has a lot of cool cards. Uh, we're going to do the same uh, just to keep it simple here. I think next time we level up, we do want to get into all of these uh, special cards here. But for now, we'll just we'll just do remove some bad cards. That is always a good idea. Let's find two minus ones from his discard pile and just remove them. Then let's look at what is next here. So we did a perks. Now we have new city interaction events. Oh, now the events start happening. Cool. Starting now, each time you successfully complete the scenario, you must encounter a city event. Before doing this for the first time, however, Retrieve the event decks from the game box and shuffle the cards. So here we have the events. We're going to shuffle these. Then draw the top card of the, uh, from the deck. Read it the introductory text. This is basically something happening on the way. It's called city events. Like it's something happening on the way back from the mission they were on. Back to the city, something happens and we get a choice. Which is a little bit of a story and like a choice we make, which is really cool. Uh, also, there's road events in normal Gloomhaven, so when you're out on your way to the mission, you do something. Uh, obviously, they don't exist here, though, in this game. So, draw a card, read the introductory text on the front. Two options. When we choose an option, we flip it over and see what happens. And then we place it in encountered events, which means uh, we won't meet them again. So, so let's, do a, uh, let's draw a card randomly here. Let's put these in here. As these are the new events. There, these dividers come with the game. So you have new events and then you have encountered events on the back. So what happened here? You notice a well-dressed Valrat merchant entering the Sleeping Lion, looking completely out of place. He scans the room, grimacing in disgust at any number of the activities going on inside. Eventually he spot your, spots your table and approaches. I have need of your service. Services mercenaries, he says, through a perfumed handkerchief. He claims there is trouble at the new docks. It seems there has been some strange happenings no one can explain. Goods moving or disappearing altogether. Eerie noises, visions of horrible demons. I hope you are able to investigate and stop whatever forces may be conspiring to topple our econ economy supremacy. Economic supremacy, sorry. So, option A, demand payment upfront. Or we could go with option B, accept the job proposal. So we, we, this might lead to a mission that we can do, which is really cool. But I want payment up front, so we're going to do option A. We have to decide before we flip the card. And then you just read that part, you don't read the other part. So option A, you can actually use the little E-Raptor holder to do this. So this says, the Van Rat looks horrified by your aggressiveness, but he soon cracks under the pressure and throws some coins in your direction. Fine, just take care of the problem quickly, he demands as he runs from the establishment. Gain five collective gold. Um, so we get five gold and it's collective. So we have to split it up we, like we don't get five each. And then a new location, Agents of Chaos 21. So now we get a new location, which is really cool. <laughs> I love these events. And uh, that's why the game can be very different from like two people playing because you might never uh, meet that event because it's a bunch of them, right? I'm just gonna give uh, hatchet, Draco Hatchet's just gonna get five gold here. Just to make it easy. But that's not bad. And then we are going to pull up, and this could be a little bit spoilery here, so I will do this off cam. 
But after I'm done here, I am going to look at that uh, location that we got and put it onto my map. I'm not going to show that to you because I don't want to do be uh, too spoiler in this playthrough series. I just want to show you the tutorial, the first five scenarios, right? Okay, so that was the events. That was fun that that happened. And now it says we should retrieve the remainder of the level 1 cards from our large box, add them to our other level 1s, removing all A and B cards permanently. They will never be used again. Alright, that's cool. I like it. So now we have like the full uh, set of cards here for our characters instead of those tutorial cards. So we have all the level 1 cards and then when we get to level 2, uh, well, we get to X cards, I think, in the next scenario as well, or after that. And then we get to level 2, then we get level 2, and 3, and so on. And when you do that, you have to choose. So, like, when we level up, level up to level 3, there's two level 3 cards, so we can choose one of those. Uh, or you can choose one that is lower level than you already reached. So, anyway, here's her cards. So, let's remove uh, it's everything with those uh, blue help texts on. And that card, obviously, is in her as well. So now she has her full hand of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cards, as she should have, uh, according to here. She should have 11 cards, so that's fun. Now it feels like the game begins for, for real, in a way. And these will not be used again. I will just put them back into the, the box over here. Um, may, normally I might rip them up, but I don't want to do that since I might sell the game at some point uh, after I'm done. Uh, might happen. We'll see. Maybe there's expansions coming for this as well. I don't know. In that case, I'm going to keep them. Okay, so let's do the same for Hatchet here. He should have his full... I look forward to the next playthrough. It's probably going to be Wednesday, I think. I'm aiming to do it on Wednesday, another stream. I will put it out on YouTube beforehand so you can see when it happens. And on Facebook and all that. Three, six, nine. 10 cards, you should have 10 cards, there we go. And I look forward to that because then it's like the game is on for real in some ways. Uh, of course, there will still be some you know, tutorial stuff since it is you know, the fourth scenario and then in the fifth as well. I think the fifth is like a, a full game for the first time, uh, if I recall correctly from what I heard. All right, so I'm going to do the event and the stickers outside of the stream. But everything is basically set up. They never used our items. Uh, never came into play really that we needed them. Uh, which was maybe a little bit sad. I didn't get to show you how that worked. But it's not that complicated. And I did explain it earlier on. So I think you got it. And I just put my characters together like this. I just, you know, pull everything off here. And then I'm ready to do some other stuff on the table. I am also, uh, parallel to this, I am also playing... Uh, me and Rack were playing Pandemic Legacy Season Zero uh, off camp, so we'll keep doing that, I think, tomorrow. And uh, then we'll be back with more of this on, I think, on Wednesday. So keep an eye open uh, on Facebook and on the channel, and you'll see that. And that is it for the stream. So two hours, uh, not a bad stream, in my opinion. <laughs> it's weird to say that myself, but I mean... It's not bad in terms of time. I was thinking it should be two scenarios. It should probably be two hours, which it actually was as well. Really fun. I really enjoy having you guys in the chat. Thank you so much for watching. If you watch this afterwards, you can tell me in the comment section down here if you have any questions about the game or the channel or whatever. And, you know, please go check out my Kickstarter as well. The link will be in the description to the video so you can see if you want to get some fun rewards with, uh, from Draco and you can support the channel as well if you like the videos we're making. Have a great evening, morning, or whenever you're watching. Take care. Bye-bye.